Greetings in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul. I'd like to welcome you today to the internet broadcast of Albany Family Worship Center. Albany Family Worship Center is located at 3024 Kensington Court in Albany, Georgia. Our service times are Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study and Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. for morning worship. I hope this message encourages you today and draws you ever closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Have a blessed day and always remember this, Jesus loves you. Everybody got their Bibles this morning? I want you to go to Romans chapter 8, verse number 31. Romans 8, verse 31. We've been uh, talking on Wednesday nights about personal inventory. And, and last Wednesday night, we talked about uh, our attitude. And this morning, God is, is giving me the topic... Time to change your negative attitude. When we change our negative attitude, we're raised above uh, our current situation. Does that make sense to you? Say amen. And, and, you know, human beings, human beings, you and me, I mean, you know, we're all human beings. Uh, we have a tendency to get negative. We ain't got no folks in here to get negative, do we? Don't raise your hands. Don't raise your hands. But we have a tendency to get negative. And the thoughts we think and the words we speak are very powerful things. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 18.1 says there's death and life in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. We've got to be careful. Everybody listen to me say amen. amen. we got to be careful with the thoughts we think and the words we speak. Because when your thoughts are negative, when your words are negative... They have a negative impact in your life. You walk around disappointed. You walk around discouraged. And you walk around defeated. Your attitude becomes one of negativity. You're never happy. Somebody needs to get some smiles on their faces this morning. You're never happy, you're, you're never satisfied, and you're never content. You're constantly, you're constantly complaining and whining and critical of all things and the people around you. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Say amen. Well, guess what? You just need a little attitude adjustment, that's all. You just need a little encouragement this morning to get you back on the right track and you'll see your outlook on life change. And you can't tell me you don't need a little change on your outlook this morning. You will see your faith in Jesus be strengthened and your relationship with Him become bolder. Why? Because Romans 8.28 Verses 31 through 32 says this. What shall we say to these things? What shall we say to these negative thoughts? What shall we say to these negative words? What shall we say to these negative circumstances? What shall we say to these things? Listen now. If God be for us. Whoo! Come on now. If God be for us. How I many you know God's for you this morning, not against you? If God be for us, who or what can be against us? Verse 32 says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also give us, free, give us freely all things? What do you need today? Hello? 
What's going on today? God didn't call you out, church, to watch you fail. God didn't call you out, church, to watch you be overcome. If God be for you, what can be against you? And if God spared not his own son, how will he not, how will he not supply for all your needs according to his riches and glory? So then why are we so negative? Why is it we look around and we see people being blessed and we clap and praise and give God glory, but when it comes to circumstances in our own lives, we're negative. Am I talking to anybody this morning say amen? amen? We get negative. We say such, listen, we say such things as this, I can't change. I can't change. This is just what this is just who I am. This is just what I am. What we're actually saying is I don't want to change. We get so we get so ingrained. We get so ingrained. We get so used to the way things are going on. We get so used to the things that's going on in our life, the way we do things. How many of us are very O C D about the things they do? Woo! I got to hold my hand up on that. And we say, I can't change when we can. We can be changed through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I will change you. How many of you need a change this morning? Jesus says, I will change you. So 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ. Are you in Christ this morning? If any man be in Christ, he is a new man. Creature, all things have passed away. You don't have to walk in that old way of doing things. You don't have to walk in that old way of life. You don't have to walk in them old circumstances. Do you hear what I'm saying? You don't have to be that way anymore. All things are passed away. All things are become new. Jesus can do something brand new with your life today if you'll let him. But some well, we're so hard-headed. We're so negative. I can't change. I, I won't change. Well, guess what? If you'll allow him, Jesus will change you. Amen? He'll mold you and make you into the person you need to be, that he wants you to be. Am I getting... Hello! Am I getting through to somebody this morning? Y'all see my little thing here? Hello! Pay attention! God says this in Jeremiah 18, 2 through 4 and verse 6. Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will call thee to hear my word. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again. Somebody say again. Another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make. Let me tell you something. If we got a flaw in our life, if we want to change, let God change us. Let him take that flaw out and make us into the vessel he wants to be. He says in verse 6, O house of Israel, you say, well, preacher, he's not talking to us. He's talking to Israel. No, he's talking to us. Amen. He's talking to you and he's talking to me. He says, O oh, house of Israel, can I, not, can I not do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are ye in mine hand, O oh, house of Israel. Let God have his will and his way with you. Quit saying I can't and start saying God can. Can somebody hear what I'm saying this morning? Let God change you. Let God mold you. Let God make you into the person he wants to be. Quit being negative and saying, I can't change when Jesus said, I can change you. Amen? The next thing we do is this. We say, I can't get well. I'm never going to get well. I'm never going going to be healed. I'm never going to stop being sick. I'm never going to stop feeling. Oh, I'm talking to somebody in here this morning. I'm never going to get better. That's the way a bunch of us are. We get so used to being in pain. We get so used to being sick. We get so used to not feeling well. I don't 
don't know about y'all, I don't like to feel bad. I don't like being sick. I don't like having health problems. Amen? I, 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 but I know, I know who can heal me. So stop saying, I'm never going to get well when Jesus says, I will heal you. Amen? The problem is, we will, come on, somebody give him praise in the house. It says in Isaiah 57, 18, I have seen his ways. God knows what's going on with you this morning. God knows what's going on in your life. Only thing you have to do is cry out to him. Only thing you got to be willing to do is humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. He said, I have seen his ways and will heal him. God wants to heal you, amen? God wants to make you better. God wants you to feel good, amen? God wants you raised up above your situation. He said, I will heal him. I will also, I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. You know, you just got to let God go. Let God have his will and his way with you. Quit being so negative. I can't stand negativity. It drives me crazy. When people say, I can't, and I know God can. And so stop saying, I can't be healed, and start letting Jesus do what he's got to do in your life when he says, I will heal you. Jeremiah 30, verse 17 says, For I will restore health unto thee. Do you hear that? God said, I will restore your health. Most of the time, you know what causes our bad health? is our lifestyle. Our negative, we do things that ain't good for us. Amen? I know I do. Praise God. You know, once I started trying to take a little bit of care of myself, I wish I'd have started it a lot earlier, but once I started taking a little bit of care of myself, started eating right and exercising and doing what I'm supposed to do, you know what? I feel a lot better. Amen? I'm not as tired as I used to be. I don't, I, don't get as, I don't get sick like I used to be. Amen? And I started praying and asking God to help me, and God started showing me the things I needed to do. And I started doing what He said do, and He began to restore my health. He said, I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. How many of you need a healing this morning? Give God some praise in the house. Well, that heat, come on. Well, that healing's yours if you'll let him go and let him do what he's got to do. You will no longer be called an outcast, but you'll be called healed of the Lord. Isaiah 53 says this, verse number 5, But he was wounded, that is Jesus, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we are healed. We are healed spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Amen. That's what he came for, praise God. I believe God's still in the healing business. Amen. And if we'll allow him to and quit being negative, we, you know, we look at people, well, God healed them, but he ain't healed me. Well, guess what? It ain't your time up to bat yet. Amen. If you'll just continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Listen, he's brought you this far. He's going to carry you the west, rest of the way. Stop saying, I can't be healed, and hear Jesus say, I will heal you. Amen? The third thing you need to know is this. I don't, we, say, we say this in a negative way. I don't know what to do. Things begin to mount up in our life. Confusion comes along. How many know confusion is not of the Lord? And we begin to say, well, well, I don't know what to do. I'm not smart enough. I don't understand. I don't know what to do. You ever said that? Come on now. Well, guess what? God says this. I will direct your steps. If you'll depend on Him completely, if you'll trust in the Lord God Almighty... You don't have to worry about what to do. You don't have to worry about understanding. He will direct your step. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord. Trust in God. 
Stop trying to stop trying to work it out. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to do it your way and just trust in the Lord God Almighty. He knows what's going on. See, he's omniscient. He, he's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. Amen? And we just got to trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Y'all trust in everything else with all your heart. Amen? We trust in things of the world with all our heart. Why not trust in the Lord God Almighty with all our heart? He's, more, he, he's greater than any silver or gold that you'll ever find. We need to commit our way to the Lord. Trust in Him with all our heart. And lean not on our own understanding. I don't know about y'all, but I learned a long time ago, I ain't all that. I, I, don't, I don't know everything. Amen. I used to think I did. I tell my wife I do. I've always told my children I do, but I don't. Only God knows everything. Only God knows the direction our life needs to go in. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Lean on God. I, I love what the old folks used to pray. God, prop me up on the leaning side. Amen. There's sometimes I just need to just throw myself on the Lord's mercy and grace and let him have his will and his way with me. And just let him take me where I need to go. It says in verse 6, in all thy ways. Now that's very important. In all thy ways. Not just your church ways. See, people, people, some people have a tendency to think, the only thing God cares about is the churchy stuff. No, God cares about everything in our life. That's why it says in all your ways. In everything you do. Whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether it's playtime, whether it's shopping time. In all thy ways. Church time, everything, and all thy ways. Acknowledge him. Put God first. <coughs> Ooh, I didn't get no amens off of that. Put God first. Our priorities should be Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen? And all thy ways, acknowledge him. Put God first. Let him have all of... Oh. Let him have all authority, control, and care. Let him tell you what to do. Let him take you by the hand to lead God and direct you. Give him all authority, control, and care of your life. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and listen now, and he shall, somebody say he shall, direct uh, thy path. He'll show you the road to take, amen? Uh. How many of you got a, got, a, got a GPS in your vehicle? Come on. That when you go on a trip, you punch in where you want to go, and it tells you the direction you need to go. Amen? And if you'll follow those directions, you'll go right to the doorstep of the address you're trying to go to. Amen? Most of the time. <laughs> I'll never forget that Lisa, the first, uh, when Lisa and I went on our honeymoon, we went to Bavard, North Carolina. And we was going on a fly fishing trip. I had taught Lisa how to fly fish. And we was going up to Bavard, North Carolina. Uh, to, to, uh, I knew a guy up there that was going to show us where to fish. And we was going to go up there and go fly fishing. Well, as we started up, we was following directions, going the way we wanted to go. And, and right outside of Bavard, I, I happened to glance at the map. And I looked at Lisa and I said, uh, you know what? I can cut about 20 or 30 miles off of a... Uh, off of our trip if I take this next left. And, and that, way, that way we ain't got to go all the way around our thumb to get to our elbow. I said, I'm going to do this. She said, you sure that's wise? And I said, yeah, look at the map. Can't you see? Look at the map. She looked at the map. She said, yeah, but why are they taking it? I said, I don't know, but I'm going this way. Doesn't that sound like most of us in life? Hello? God done showed us the way to, to go. He done, he done give us a, a GPS to follow, a, a, a God positioning sensor, amen. And, but yet and still, we want to go our own way. Well, that next left I come to, I took it and went down the road a little bit, and I seen a sign. It said, caution, 10% grade. 
Now, I don't know if any of you ever traveled in the mountains, but 10% grade is mighty steep, amen? And the next thing I knew, I was going up a mountain. And as we travel up that mountain, I looked over, I said, Lisa, look at that other road over there coming in to bisect with the road we're on. She said, honey, that's not another road. That's the road we're on. And we started hitting switchbacks. Amen. I don't know if, ever been, if any of you ever traveled around the mountain. There's a lot of switchbacks back and forth. And, and you, you, before you know it, your, your front end is near about meeting your rear end as you go around some of them curves and stuff. And there was places we would go around in that mountain. Couldn't drive over about 25, 30 miles an hour. Uh, there was some of those places you'd be coming up on a curve and you'd be looking straight out and you wouldn't see nothing but sky. Amen. And I told Lisa, I said, I hope and pray we don't meet a semi-truck up here, amen? Because I don't know if we'll pass on these roads. And it took us all of an hour, to, an hour, hour and a half to transverse that shortcut that was cutting off 23 miles, amen? I learned right then not to take off on my own anymore in some place I don't know. I'm telling you today, if the Lord don't lead you to it, you don't need to be trying to go through it. You hear what I'm saying to you? Let God direct your path. Or you'll do like I've done that time and you'll get off someplace you don't want to be. Praise God. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. It says in Isaiah 45, 13, I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. Let God have control of your life. Can somebody believe that? Give God a hand clap of praise this morning. How many of us have said this? I'm so tired. I don't think I can go on. I'm so tired. I think I'll just stay home from church today. I'm so tired. I don't think I can handle the situation anymore. I'm so tired. We say that in such a negative way. But Jesus says this. I will give you strength. And I, I will give you rest. And I will give you the strength to go on. Amen. It says in Matthew 2, 11, 28. Come unto me. See, that's an invitation. If Jesus didn't want to give you rest, if Jesus didn't want to strengthen you, he would never say, come unto me. But he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I guarantee there's some, there's some heavy laden folks in here today. Amen. There's some folks in here that's been laboring hard in their life. But Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, listen, and I will give you rest. I will give you what you need for the journey ahead. Amen. You don't have to be tired and wore out. Jesus will give you the strength you need to go on. Psalms 1832 says this, it is God that girdeth me with strength. He'll give you the strength to put one more foot in front of the other, amen? He'll let you go on one more step, but you got to depend on him. You got to stop being so negative. You got to stop thinking that there ain't no hope for you. That's the way some of you are. Ooh, am I getting too rough this morning? Listen now, listen now. Let God be your rest. Let God be your strength. It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect, Amen? He'll open doors that no one can shut, and he'll shut doors that no one can open. Amen. Only thing we got to be do, only thing we got to do is be willing to step through. Only thing we got to be willing to do is quit pounding at the ones he shut and wearing ourselves out. See, that's what some of us do when God shuts the door. We stand there and beat our heads against it, trying to get through. When that's not the way God wants us to go. God's got a plan and purpose for your life today. You don't have to be tired and wow. You don't have to be without strength. God will give you what you need for the journey. If you believe that, give God a hand clap of praise today. Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Y'all ready for this? We say the situation is impossible. I give up. Some of us are too quick to give up. So, oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Give me, give me the right words here. 
Some of us, when we come up against it, we think it's impossible and we just lay down. We don't even try. We just give up. Well, Jesus says this, nothing is impossible with me. How many of you know that God's greater than any situation we'll ever face in life? That God's bigger than any travesty. That God is bigger than any flood that comes our way. God is bigger than anything we'll ever face in our life, and nothing is impossible with Him. It says in Luke 1, For with God, somebody say with God, nothing shall be impossible. Quit, quit, quit selling your God short. Amen? Quit, quit, looking at your, quit looking at your God through your situation and start looking at your situation through your God. Amen? And you'll get things in the right perspective because nothing shall be impossible with God. Luke 18, 27. The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. When you put all your trust and faith in Jesus Christ, he can raise you above that flood. He can raise you above that storm, amen. All things are possible for those that have faith in Jesus Christ. Do you hear what I'm saying to you today? You just got to get a hold of it, amen. Well, it looks like it's going to be a rough time from here on out. Well, guess what? You just spoke defeat in your life. Amen. Amen. We look at our situation and we say, oh, no, what am I going to do? i tell you what you're going to do. You're going to depend on God completely. Quit whining and moaning and groaning. Mm. Don't raise your hand, but we got any whiners and complainers in the house? Most of us are. Amen. Things not working out our way, what are we go to doing? Whining and complaining and moaning and groaning, saying, It's impossible. Well, what's impossible with men is possible with God. Jesus said these words in Mark chapter 11. Now, these words are in red in my Bible. I don't know about y'all. But they're in red in my Bible. That means we need to pay attention to them because it's the words of Jesus. Mark eleven twenty two through 24. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. That means depend on Him completely. Amen? Quit running around with a chick, like a chicken with your head cut off. Stop moaning and groaning and complaining and have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Jesus said, if you have faith as big as a grain of a mustard seed, you should tell that mountain to remove from here to there, and it will move. Amen? The problem is, we'll speak it. Y'all ready for this one? Everybody pay attention to me and say amen. We speak it, but we won't believe it. We doubt in our heart. We doubt God. Well, you know, I'm, I, I know what the Word says. I, 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 I hear you, Jesus, but because we don't trust. We don't, we don't, we don't, have, we don't have that kind of faith that takes to see, to see things go on in our life. We think there's impossibilities with God when there's not. All things are possible with God. And if all things are possible with God, when we trust in Him completely, when we put all our faith in Him, nothing shall be impossible for us. Amen? We just got to learn to quit being negative. Amen? If you believe that, they give God a hand clap of praise. And here's another dilemma we have. We say, I just can't forgive myself. We began to dwell in the past. We began to dwell on past failures, on past sins, whatever it may be. And we say, I just can't forgive myself for that. Hello, am I talking to somebody in here this morning? Well, you know what Jesus says? Jesus says, I forgive you. And if Jesus forgives you, you've got to forgive yourself. 
Because guess what? Jesus is holy and more righteous than you, and he's greater than you, and if he's willing to forgive you, you need to start being willing to forgive yourself. The only thing that's going on is you're dwelling in the past. You're dwelling on what the devil says. You're dwelling on what the world says. You're dwelling on what the world says and not dwelling on what Christ says. You've got to get your mind right. Quit being so negative. Am I talking to somebody here today? God don't care what you've done or where you've been as long as you've confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart. He's forgiven you today. Jesus says, I, listen, Jesus says, I forgive you. It says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, if you confess that sin, it's been cast as far. Oh, somebody needs to hear what I'm going to say. If you confess that sin before Jesus, you spoke the same thing about that sin that Jesus says about. If you confess that sin before him, he's cast that sin as far as away from you as the east is from the west. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful. Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It says in Romans 8, verse number 1, There is therefore now. Somebody say right now. There is therefore now. At this instant, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you confess your sins to Jesus, and He's forgiven you. Hello? And He's forgiven you. There is therefore now no condemnation. You're not condemned anymore. You're forgiven. You're not condemned anymore. You've been justified just as if I'd never sinned. You've been declared righteous by the righteous and just judge himself. Do you hear what I'm saying to you now? There is therefore now no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus. Hello. Who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. When you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And God has forgiven you. Uh, the last thing I want to talk to you about is this. Here, listen. Everybody listen to me say amen. We're quick to say this. Nobody cares about me. Nobody loves me. How many of you said that before? Nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. See, everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants somebody to love and somebody to love them. We all want to know that somebody cares about us. And we're quick when we're down and depressed and in that negative mood. We're quick to say, nobody loves me. And nobody cares about me. But Jesus says these words, I love you. And I care about you. See, Jesus loves you. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world. If you don't take nothing else away from you today, you take this away from here. Jesus loves you. And He loves you with a love that's greater than you'll ever know here on this earth. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him, only thing it takes to experience that love today is faith. That whosoever believeth in him have faith in Jesus Christ. Have faith in Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 8 says this, But God commandeth his love towards us. See, God loves you on purpose. Hello. God loves you on purpose. It's not an accidental love. You know, we as human beings, we, we, we have accidental love. I hate to put it that way, but that's the way it is. See, we have accidental love because we only love somebody that, that'll, 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 that'll love us back, or we only love somebody when we're getting something. Hello? Let me tell you something. You let, you let somebody get mad at you. I don't love you anymore. You, you ever had your kids get a little upset with you? I don't love you. Or, or, or you try to discipline them, they look at you and say, you don't love me, not understanding that discipline is love. Amen? 
But if somebody's not doing something for us, if we're not getting what we want from that person, if we're not getting what we need from that person, we don't love them. But see, that's not like God. God's love is a purpose love. Despite who we are. Despite what we've done. Am I making sense to you say amen? God loves us on purpose. But God commanded his love towards us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It says in 1 John 4, 9, In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world. How many you know that God loves the sinner as well as the saint today? See, God is love. And God will never turn His back on us. As long as this breath of life in our body for us to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, we'll know God's love. And you know what? We need to walk in that love. We need to quit saying that nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. Because we're speaking a lie when we do. Because God does love us. And God does care what's going on. I know there's been a lot of times in my life I've been in, I've been in adverse situation. I've looked up at God and said, Don't you care what I'm going through? How many of you have said that before? Well, He does. He loves you. And he does care. It says in 1 Peter 5, 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Do you understand that today, church? God does care about what's going on in your life. But you know what? God is such a gentleman that God's not going to butt into your affairs. You've got to turn to him and you've got to take that situation and cast it before the cross. And watch God move. Because He loves you. And He cares what's going on with you right now. Are you willing this morning? Listen, listen, somebody hear me. Are you willing to cast it before the Lord this morning? And watch, watch Him wash it away? Are you willing this morning to get out of that negative mode? And start trusting in Jesus completely? See, it's up to you. You've got to take that step of faith today. You've got to trust Him enough today to let Him change you. To let Him begin to mold and make you into the person you need to be. And I guarantee you this, when you cry out to Him for mercy and grace, you will receive it. Amen? I don't care what you're facing today. Start trusting in Jesus completely and watch your life change. All heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. There's nobody looking around this morning. Will you take that step of faith today? Will you run to the altar today and say, Lord, change my negative outlook. Give me a positive faith today to trust in you completely. To change my situation. And to give me the strength to go on. These altars are open, whatever you'll need today. I urge you to stand and to come. Won't you come? Won't you come? Hi, this is Pastor Bobby Paul again. I hope you enjoyed today's message. It has encouraged and drawn you ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there may be some of you out there today that's made a decision of faith. That is the decision to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it's so simple to do today. The Bible teaches us that if we'll just confess with our mouth and believe in our heart the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you can call upon him right now by saying this simple prayer of faith. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me, a sinner. Right now, Lord, I turn from sin and self, and I turn to you, Jesus, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, I give you all authority, control, and care of my life. Be my Lord and Savior forevermore. I love you, Jesus. Amen. If you just said that prayer, you just become a blood-bought, born-again child of God. And we would love to hear your decision here at Albany Family Worship Center. And here's how you can contact us. You can write us at Albany Family Worship Center, 3024 Kensington Court, Albany, Georgia, 31721. You can send us an email, and our email address is my afwc at gmail.com that's m-y-a-f 
wc at gmail.com or you can call us at 229 434 0342. We're looking forward to hearing from you today and we would love for you to come and visit. We'd love to meet you and the family. Have a blessed day and always remember this Jesus loves you. <laughs>